Okay, so today you're at that point, you built your computer or you, you bought your computer and you powered it up, you went through the uh, whole setup of putting your name in and selecting your internet, all that fun stuff. What do you do now? What is the first steps on where you go from here? So that's kind of what we're gonna go over today. So one of the first things that I would recommend is Windows Updates. Uh, you get to Windows Updates, and this is going to be presuming that you're on Windows 10. Uh, Windows 11 is out there, but not that popular like yet. Um, but it pretty much is the same across the board, whether you're on Windows 10 or 11. Um, so first thing you're going to do is click the Start button here, and you can simply just type in Updates, and you'll see Check for System Updates. Now I'm on a virtual server or a virtual machine here, um, so yeah, we're going to... See, there's going to be quite a few updates to go through on here. I'm literally not going to go through these, uh, but on your machine, I suggest that you do these. However, when you get down here to the Windows 11, um, that's up to you. Whether you want to update to Windows 11, whether your system will allow you to update to Windows 11, that's a whole different story. Um, if you're on Windows 10 and you're happy, I would suggest skipping the Windows 11 update for now and just kind of go with everything else. So when you do the Windows 11 updates, that will actually grab some hardware updates like your Wi-Fi uh, card, your network card, audio stuff, stuff like that. So that can actually grab some of that, uh, some of the drivers. And we're going to actually talk about drivers next. Um, so once you do all the Windows updates, get that squared away. The next thing that you want to focus on is drivers. Now, if you built your system, um, you should know what type of motherboard you have. For instance, I'm just going to pull up a web browser here. Uh, for instance, I want to use um, my motherboard here. So what I'm going to do is I have the Asus Maximus 13 Hero. You just go down to drivers here. And as you can see, make sure that you're at the official site here, rog.asus.com, and that's what it looks like. So you'll go to the official website for your motherboard. Yeah, yeah, accept cookies. Uh, let's close this. Now, the screen might be a little bit smaller, what you guys are seeing, because like I said, I am on a virtual machine, um, and so I'm using VMware for that, so it's, it's kind of narrowing it down, but I, I think this does the trick. So this is the motherboard that I have here. So what you'll do is uh, you'll scroll down and somewhere in here, actually it might be at the top. Let's see, menu support. You'll always find the support uh, button for your actual piece of hardware. Now for Asus, it's actually very well laid out. Um, so for this, um, you see here driver and utility. You can also download the manuals and documents for it and uh, what CPUs and memory it supports, which is kind of a good feature there. But for here, you'll go to driver and utility. Now drivers, for those of you that don't know, are basically bits of software that allow your hardware to work properly. Um, and so every piece of hardware has drivers or firmware that you will need. Uh, this this uh, motherboard also has a uh, BIOS and firmware updates, but we won't get into that today. We're just going to go for drivers. So the first thing that you do is select your operating system. And in this case, it's going to be Windows 10. And this will list out all of the drivers, updated drivers available for your system. So this particular motherboard, much like whatever motherboard you have, it has like built-in LAN, which is local area network. And that's what you plug your Ethernet cable into from your modem, or as some people call it, the Internet cable. Um, a lot of motherboards nowadays are coming with a wireless uh, chip, and so that is your update for that. Uh, your chipset driver, which is very important. A lot of motherboards have onboard audio, which this has, so this has your updated audio. Uh, if your motherboard has onboard graphics, that's VGA, Bluetooth, etc., etc. So I would go through here, download all of these that you need one by one, 
and put them in a folder. I usually just use the desktop. I just throw them on the desktop and install those later. So that pretty much covers like the motherboard. Again, that's if you have all that stuff on board. The other thing, if you built your system, you may have a high-end graphics card. Like the 3000 series graphics cards are popular now if you can get them. Uh, you might even have a 1000 series graphics card like I used to and just got rid of it. I was actually able to finally find a 3000 series. So for graphics cards, it's kind of the same thing. You can actually uh, search out, Google the make and model, and kind of the same thing that I just showed you. Or if it's an NVIDIA, uh, even easier, you can actually use the GeForce Experience. It's a free application. You'll have to create an account to log into it, which is kind of dumb in my opinion. Uh, but GeForce Experience will have a quick way to update the driver in your system of the graphics card that you have. Um, AMD, if you have an AMD card, they have a similar piece of software, but I, I couldn't tell you what it is. I'm not an AMD guy. Not that I dislike AMD or anything like that. So, okay, moving on. Um, you guys have heard me talk about this before, the XMP profile. So basically the XMP profile, I actually have a video. It'll pop up right up here. Um, I made a video about that, and that it just basically gets the most out of your memory that you have installed. So um, you'll uh, go through those steps in that video, and that will help you out with that. Okay, so moving on after XMP Profile, at this point, you want to install all of the applications that you're going to use. Now, what you should do is like, as you see, Windows, I'm going to close this out. Windows comes with their web browser, which is Microsoft Edge, which it's not terrible, but I recommend not using it. I would use something like Firefox, uh, Google Chrome. Google Chrome is the best, in my opinion. Um, so you want to download stuff like that. Any other things, like if you use like the GIMP photo editor, which is a free photo editor, um, or any other applications that you're used to seeing, I've got a handy little trick here for you. Open up your web browser, and I will go ahead and put this, uh, this uh, link in the description below too. But you want to head on over to www, and it's n-i-n-i-t-e.com. Yes, it's a funny name, ninite.com. But this is a great site for a couple of reasons. So instead of you going over to, well, let's scroll through here. Say you want to download Chrome web browser. You want the Firefox web browser. You also want Zoom, Discord, and Skype in your system. You want VLC. All of these that you might want. Here's the GIMP that I, uh, the photo editor that I suggested. If you want all of these, this site is convenient because you no longer have to go to the website of each one of those and spend a ton of time downloading one thing individually, 30 different tabs open. The way Ninite works is you go through, you pick what you want, and I'm just gonna choose a few here because I don't wanna overload my virtual machine. I don't use it that often, but I'm gonna choose a few. So say we want Chrome, we want Firefox, and yeah, I want Discord, and let's go with uh, GIMP here too. And there's so many here. There's so many here, different, uh, different categories, different, uh, there's like there's stuff for security, your offline storage, your OneDrives and stuff like that. Uh, just a whole bunch of different uh, utilities here, like Revo Uninstaller, that's, that's a good thing to have, but a whole bunch. So after you select what you want, you simply scroll down here to get your Ninite. That sounds so weird. And what it will do is it will down one single installer. But when you're done with that, all you do is click Open File. And it literally not only just extracts them, it will actually go through and install everything that you chose. Now, for those of you who are skeptical of third-party sites and getting your software, which I've heard a couple people say this, but they don't understand. Ninite actually, if you go here to help, in fact, and how it works, scroll down here, it will actually tell you 
that the downloads come from the original publishers and they are checked for digital signatures. So it's not just anybody in the world that wants to upload to this site can upload to this site. That's not how that works. These are actually pulled from the original uh, publishers websites and, and their download areas. So you don't have to worry about getting a file that's virus ridden or something like that. It's your one stop shop for most everything that uh, you would want in your system. Now, as far as like Microsoft Office, you know, which has Word and Excel and stuff like that, that's not where you'll download it. If you've already bought that, refer to where you bought it from. You should have a product key. There are downloaders out there that you can re-download that, um, or you may have kept the download file. But most likely these days, that's kept under your Microsoft account under software that you have purchased. So you can just log into your Microsoft account and go there and refer back to that to get those uh, reinstalled. Uh, so now that uh, Ninite has done its thing, it's uh, installing here. And as you can see, it has already installed Firefox, already installed Chrome, already installed Google, or I'm sorry, Discord. Let's go ahead and open up Chrome. As you can see, there's your Chrome browser. So all of that took us what, aside from it downloading, maybe a minute to choose what we wanted and create the file. Uh, if you were going to go to each website individually, you'd still be going there. Uh, so this is just a nice, easy, free, convenient way to get a lot of your software in one location to where you don't have to continue to do that. Okay, so with that said, with all that installed, we're gonna let we're gonna let that finish, but I'm gonna go on to the next and final stage of setting up your computer. This is the way I do it, and this is just kind of how I keep things cleaned and tidied up. Okay, as you can see, it installed everything here. And so there's your new applications that are installed by one single download. So next, what we're gonna do, a lot of people don't know this, and I may have covered this in another video at some point. Um, but you want to clean up your startup tab because every time you install something in Windows, nine times out of ten, it will set it to run in the background. So when you restart your computer, even if you don't see that software pop up, you've got some piece of that running in the background and that's just taking up your memory. You don't need that to happen. So in order to stop that, what you're going to do is clean up the startup tab. And to do that, you're going to right click down here on the taskbar and you're going to go to task manager. You're going to see multiple tabs here. The one we're interested in at this point is startup. Now this will show you a list of most everything that's installed in your system, but more importantly, everything that is running or not running when the system is starting. So to filter these out quickly by what is running. Just click the status. And as you can see, these three things here are running. Uh, this is a GitHub update. I'm not sure what that's from, uh, but you got Microsoft Edge running in the background when you start the computer and you have Discord running in the background when you start the computer. Um, Discord might be one of those that you do want to automatically start. I don't like that. I like I like to start things manually by myself. Um, so what you can do uh, is go in here and disable the things that you don't need to run when the PC starts. Uh, the first one that we see here, if we go from bottom to top, as far as the enable filter, you see Windows Security Notifications. And what this is, is Windows Defender. I leave this running because that is all I use for antivirus. I don't fall into the whole deal of downloading AVG antivirus or any of the other ones. In my opinion, they slow your system down. And as long as you are browsing safely and not opening attachments when people send them to you, if you don't know them, this is pretty much all you need. Um, so I always let this one continue to stay enabled. Um, update from GitHub, don't know what this is. GitHub is, is a well-known uh, website. That's nothing to worry about. Um, but I don't need this running when the computer starts. So you just simply right click and hit disable. 
Same with Microsoft Edge. Don't need that to start when the computer starts. Right click, hit disable. And Discord. Don't need it to start when the computer starts. Right click, hit disable. Um, or you can just highlight it and go down here and give it that option too. Um, but see, as of now, when we restart, the only thing that will be enabled is Security Defender or not Notifications, which is uh, Microsoft Windows Defender. Um, so that is about it. Once you restart, none of those applications will start when your computer starts. And again, that just eats up memory if you have those enabled. So it's always best just to kind of clear that list out and make sure you don't have anything in there that you truly don't need. If you have a ton of memory and you don't care, then then fine, go, go at it. But uh, that can actually take up a lot of memory. And I've seen systems run real slow because somebody's running like four gigs of RAM and they've got like 30 things starting when the computer starts and they wonder why it's slow. And then they call the computer a piece of garbage and it has nothing to do with the computer. So... Anyway, guys, that's it. There are probably other things that you could do for a new PC. Maybe I'll do another video, um, but that's just some of the basics. So let me know if this helped you out, what you think of this. If you liked it, leave a like, leave a comment, and consider subscribing. Thanks, guys, and have a great day.